It is our pledge duty to offer guidance and advise the governor, the legislature, and the film office. We don't pass laws, we don't have that authority, we don't spend money, we have no budgetary authority. The 25 million that will be allocated into the 21st century jobs growth fund, according to the governor's proposal, that will drop to five million in a couple of years, is the end of the Michigan film, TV, and video game industry as we know it. My suggestion would be that if we don't want a meaningful incentive plan, then we should be honest and say we do not want this industry. And I agree completely with Jim. We have to be very clear about this, that, that these programs, these businesses are over with in Michigan if uh, some compromise cannot be uh, uh, worked out. In this uh, new fragile baby of an industry, it really was one of the, the worst um, tactics that the new administration could have taken. And the worst part of it is we were not given any details of what was coming. So we as a Michigan film industry looked like fools. We didn't have any advanced talking points. We had absolutely no form of damage control. So that mistake cannot be repeated if we want to protect the significant investment that Michigan's made. Someone who gets even one or two lines on a film could be averaging about $800 to $1,000 a day. If they're lucky to be working a couple weeks, then they're making $10,000 for that. We hear so much about this has not produced full-time jobs, but someone who makes $10,000 in two weeks may only be working 30, 40 hours and not working the next month or so. But that money does carry them through as if they're having a full-time job. Uh, our union was at 40% unemployment uh, when this uh, initiative was first passed. Uh, we've had full employment since uh, this went through, and our local union has grown at a rate that is unprecedented uh, in the 115-year history uh, of our union. Uh, these are good-paying jobs with good benefits, uh, pensions, medical care, we're going to lose it all unless we all work together. The Ernst & Young and Report Commission by from Detroit's parent company organization, which is the Detroit Metro Convention of Visitors Bureau, and our fellow CBBs in Ann Arbor, Traverse City, and Grand Rapids, has had a profound impact on numerous legislators, including the state Senate, state Senate Majority Leader. And, and I'm wondering if it's naive, universally naive, for us to think by leveling the playing field on a tax code basis, that's going to be, you know, a de facto silver bullet, and we'll just have to keep feed them out of, you know, feed them back into Ohio as they come flooding across the state line. Because I don't, I don't think that that's enough of uh, an incentive to overcome the other obstacles that we have. I think he really comprehends the value of these incentives. So the $25 million cap doesn't follow with what we assumed he was thinking at the time. The governor's office thinks the $25 million can sustain the business. I'd like to know that if we're going to work on something that could eventually be accepted, it's repeated that $25 million, you believe, will sustain it. And I think some of us up the pike would like to understand what the thought process is in that if we're going to go forward and work on an alternative plan.